Welcome back. Week three, Coffee with Coach. We got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to head on out to West Orange County and talk a bit about that. But wow. I mean, first, we got we to gotta at least address week two, right? I mean, week two was a, a special week. So, uh, Coach, I think this week, let's start before we talk about our sponsor and what we're doing up in here that you see. Let, let's talk about week two. So you, you know what you did, Coach. You know it's a thing. You did a thing, Coach. So what, <laughs> what did you do? Tell us what you did. How did it go? You know the thing. You don't have to say the names, but you can say the thing. Tell us what happened, Coach. We, uh, we played a great Don Bosco prep team out of New Jersey that came down here. Uh, you know, they were one of the better teams in the, in the state of New Jersey and ranked nationally, and, and it was good for us to play this quality a quality opponent and it was a great game it's 13 10 and a half we had the lead um, tough tough going um, the first half and then our guys continued to battle and fight found a way to kind of pull pull away there later in the third and the fourth quarter uh, to win 34 10 so great win for this program um, this community our school hats off to our players and and uh, everybody that was involved you know and it, we, we celebrated it we had a lot to get corrected and now we're moving on to West Orange and hoping to, to get better this week. I hear you, Coach. That's uh, It was an amazing game. A little mm -hmm. bit of rain, but no thunder. It was a hostile environment. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Sent them boys packing back to New Jersey, in my opinion, and, and beat the <laughs> nationally ranked team. I saw them out here warming up. Uh, I believe it was last Thursday when they were here warming up. Mm -hmm. And they were warming up for the game, and, and they were doing this jumping and uh, and everything. And and I was like, wow, these boys are big. They look really, really tough. And then, you know what? I heard Coach Duke, he was talking to one of his friends, and he said, I don't care how they warm up. I want to see them play. And, well, we played. That's how I feel. Yeah. Anything else, Coach? No, it was, uh, the community was awesome. The, the student section was off the charts. Um, we, had, we had great home field advantage. So thank you for everyone that, that made the uh, trip last Friday night uh, here at Edgewater. It was a big advantage to play those guys at home. So hats off to this community and everyone that was at the game supporting our team. Absolutely. So now we move on. We move on to our normal routine. First, I'd like to talk about our sponsor. This week, our sponsor is, is Water, okay? And I, I find uh, marketing, I find shows like this very interesting. I find people, uh, you know, coming up with great ideas very interesting. So we also have a sponsorship here this week from Liquid Death Water, okay? Liquid Death, guys, if you see some tough guy drinking this, this is seriously just water in the white can. I think we should start a Twitter account where we watch people when they walk into to like 7-Eleven and they think they're buying like a monster drink or something. And actually they're buying, if they buy this white can, they're buying water. They probably I've seen guys open them up and go, oh my God, this is, what is this? It's like water, okay? I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like bad or something. They also make a bubbly version, and I like personally bubbly water. Uh, it makes me think of being in Paris. You ever been to Paris? I have Coach? not. You should go to Paris. I would like to go. Paris gets a bad rap, y'all. People think them, them French are mean, but the French aren't mean. They're very nice people. So I got myself uh, a can of liquid death bar, uh, sparkling water for this show that I'm going to drink because hydration and water is super important. Hydration and skin care, okay? So let's make sure that we wear our sunscreen. Let's make sure we go to our dermatologist. And boys, drink water, okay? I want you drinking more water. So like get those big bottles and drink a whole one in a day. Did you know that if you're an athlete, you should drink your body weight in ounces of water every day? So I'm at, not, least. at least. At, at least. least. At least. In this kind of heat, yeah. at least. So that means I'm 192 pounds when I wake up in the morning. 195 by this time of day. That means I should drink 195 ounces of water. 164 ounces is a gallon. You don't need one of them fancy things that says, like, keep up the good work on the side like your mamas and your aunties have. You don't need one of those. You just need an old milk jug and drink water. So before we move on, we're going to have a little fun here, Coach. Take a sip of that one right there. That's for you, Coach. This one right here. This one right here. Okay. I opened it up for you already. Right. This is liquid death. Tell us what you think. Yep. It's water. That's liquid death. Okay. <laughs> so it's it, what a great marketing strategy. Liquid yep. death was started by a Netflix creative director. Um, it's Austrian water. It comes from the Alps or something like that. And they made it look like for the death metal tough guy crowd. This is really what they tried. So what I did is I took four different waters. One of them is, is liquid death. And there are three others here. So, Coach, I'd like you to take A, B, C, and D and try them. 
and then tell us which one you think is liquid debt. And then I have in sealed envelopes here, I have all our letters, and Coach is going to find out what he's actually drinking. Okay, right. Coach? Go for it. Okay. That's A. B. Okay. C and D. That's not toilet water, is it? I, I would never do that to okay. you, Coach. Not toilet water. <laughs> Coach says that toilet water. I don't know. I, I'm not too proud, but I drink toilet water. All right, but <laughs> if I had to. All right, Coach, so uh, which one do you think was liquid death? <clears throat> They're all very similar in taste. And and so water like, tastes yeah, like water? Exactly. <laughs> Even Austrian Alp water? <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing B. You're uh, guessing B. So I'm here's B. B. Okay, let's right. start with some other ones. Since, uh, let's start with A. Okay. Okay. Since B was your guess, we'll save B. A is water from my kitchen sink. That's what Mr. Lesher drinks. I don't drink bottled water. I'm not only bubbly water. If I buy water, it's bubbly. I don't drink nothing else. All right, let's see what C was. All right, C. Building 12 water fountain. Okay, that's some that. fine water there. It's got one of them new fancy things yep. you put your bottle underneath sure it. Sure is. Use that, boys. That's fancy. Okay. D. Drum roll. D. Not toilet water. <laughs> water hose from under the stadium. Uh, that's my favorite kind of water. I knew I've had that. Miss, Mr. Lesher grew up on hose pipe water, I used to call it. My mom would say, go get some water out of the spigot. Even if there was no hose on it, you'd sit there and you'd lap it up like a dog. It has a special taste to it, Coach. Yep. I'm not scared of your germs. So, <laughs> Oh, man, I murdered my thirst. That, <laughs> it does have a nice taste to it. it. It does. It tastes like Florida. Okay, last one then, Coach. You know what it is. Read what it says. I murdered your thirst, liquid death. Yep, Coach got it right. We gave him a little. He, he cheated a little first because I let him sip his little fancy right, can here. That's true. But if he goes out, Coach coach goes out in the afternoon or something, he could have a liquid death. Oh, cheers, John. Cheers. cheers to Don Bosco in week two. <laughs> All right. So, moving on. Let's go past our sponsor. Let's move on uh, now to our HPC Spotlight. So, it's Friday. Uh, we switched it up because coffee is actually a dehydrator. So today I just wanted to point out water and talk about how important water is for our boys and our growth as a team. So we've seen it happen, Coach. This is the HBC Spotlight. Every week you shine a light on somebody. And this week, who are you shining a light on? I'm going to shine, you know, our light on. It was our first home game. And, you know, we had our kickoff classic canceled against Seminole. So last week was our first home game. A lot goes into having a home game, especially when you host an out-of-state out of team. A lot of preparation involved. Um, and I thought our atmosphere was first class, and that's a testament to our athletic director, Josh Vandergriff. Uh, he puts on all the details behind the scenes within all of our sports, including football, and having a home game, being 1-0 at home is, is awesome. Uh, but it's a testament to our athletic director, Josh Vandergriff, um, and his uh, help with all things athletics, but yes, in football season, him helping us with the football program in many ways, and of course, conduct, conducting a great home game. Um, was awesome. So having a big time AD is, is huge for us as a football program and Josh Vandergriff. I love it. He's a good guy. He's fun. I like him. He's not so fun on a Friday night. It's kind of <laughs> kind of aggressive, but it's okay. That's he's just doing his job. I like people doing their jobs. Do your job if you're on the field. You deep snap, do the job. Deep snap the ball. Right. You, you run it back, you run it. Okay, so next up, Coach, we're going to talk about our opponent this week, West Orange High School. I'm going to give us a little rundown, okay? Um, this one's a, a very I – I want to see the flock this week, okay, guys? There's going to be some argument about this because, uh, uh, well, I went to Dr. Phillips High School, and uh, my wife, she's a West Orange Warrior. And I claim that the West Orange Warriors used to do this. Because West Orange Warriors, you see it, W-O-W. -W, and she goes, we didn't do that. And I say, I say yes, you did. And we say, ah, D-P, ah, D-P, and you went like this. And it looks so <laughs> silly. So if the flock does this, I'm going to think it's funny, okay? So make sure, first, we understand I got some history with this stuff. It's, uh, 
This is a game I used to play in one of them battle games. It was the battle for the orange crate, West Orange County. It's where a lot of our oranges and citrus come from. And then what they do with it, they get their product. And where would they drive it? They drive it right here downtown. They put it in them trucks and they bring it to downtown Orlando to the packing district. If you don't know about that, it's coming. You'll know. Mm. All right. So uh, we got some other things over there. Their principal. Uh, we still see him around here. His name's Matthew Turner. Uh, he's a former Eagle Dean. So he's an Eagle. Once an Eagle, always an Eagle. Hopefully, uh, uh, Mr. Turner helps us out this week and tells those boys not to play so good and lets the Eagles win. Uh, but we might not even need his help. Uh, he, is, he is also a, a really great basketball player, if you didn't know. Uh, in our senior game, Mr. Turner, he used to shoot the lights out from half court. He's like six foot six. You'll see him. He's skinny, walking around the track. You'll see him, <laughs> big and tall, and he just shoots, shoots, shoots. I mean, an amazing basketball player. You can ask Coach Moran about him. He knows him. So, uh, you know, this to me, suburbs versus city. Suburbs versus city. Orlando's where it started, and what happened when people started to move away? They started to move out west. And they just kept moving west. They kept moving east. They moved to Winter Garden. And they even went out there to Claremont. Mm -hmm. I know some people from Claremont, too. I think like everybody cools from Claremont these days. <laughs> why do all the cool people move to Winter Garden and to Claremont? I don't know why. All right, Coach. So we got this this, this uh, West Orange Warriors, Valhalla, whatever they say. <laughs> um, tell us a little about them, please. They're 2-0 and undefeated. They just had a big win last week against the Popka. Uh, you know, we haven't had a chance to play them since I've been at Edgewater. It's our first time. Uh, we got here in 17, and uh, we haven't played them. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us to play a quality opponent tonight. Um, we're excited. they got a lot of really good players. They've had a, a really good years. Been a playoff team the last few years. Uh, won the district last year. Uh, they got a big-time defensive back going to the University of Florida. Uh, their quarterback's extremely athletic. Uh, they're very talented on both sides of the ball. Uh, we got our work cut out for us on the road. So uh, we look forward to the challenge tonight. We're going to need a, a great support from our, the flock and from all of our fans to make the trip down the road to Winter Garden. Uh, but Edgewater versus West Orange, both 2-0 and football teams, both ranked in the Sentinel Super 16. I think it's a, it's a great matchup. Uh, but we got to go play well tonight. I love it. I do love that. Coach, any, any like? Any thoughts on any specific players from West Orange? Any numbers we can watch from yeah, your team? we got to stop their quarterback. He, he's a talented kid. He's a junior, dual-threat kid. Uh, we can't let him beat us tonight. Um, their linebacker, number eight, is a really good linebacker. Uh, their defensive line is talented across the board, number five. Their their safety also play corner. is somebody we got to kind of know where he is on the field um, at all times, in, in the kicking game, too, to make sure we're not just giving him uh, – a clean uh, punt return or kick return as well. A very talented kid going to University of Florida. So um, we're going to have to play good in all three phases. We're going to have to play together like we did this past week. Um, and if we do that, then we think we'll be okay. But it's we got our work cut out for us, and we look forward to the challenge. Playing on the road, I'm sure it'll be a packed house. Um, it's going to be a great environment tonight. I love it. I'm telling you this right now, guys. This Coffee with Coach makes me happy because it shows everybody out there how much goes into football. All right, when Coach is answering these questions and he's talking about people and he's talking about formations and he's talking about opponents and he's talking about film, this is what happens with football. This is why he makes the big bucks. I mean, super big bucks. I mean, like Nick Saban kind of money. Yeah. He's got his own helicopter maybe, so maybe someday. <laughs> okay, so you ever been to Winter Garden, Coach? I have. What do, what, do you, what do you think about Winter Garden? They've done a great job of their downtown. You know, I grew up in Claremont, uh, so it's not too far. Uh, but, you know, there's there's – West Orange has had a really good football program for a long time. Um, had a lot of great players come out of there. Uh, but it's, you know, it's own unique community and city over there. Um, it's not Orlando, I'll tell you that. But it is a nice little area. A lot of people moved out there. A lot of people love living in Winter Garden. they got a great little downtown area. And the, the bike trail goes right through there. Um, so nice area. I'm more fond of College Park, personally, and Claremont than I am Winter Garden. But, um, you know, we get a chance to go there and play tonight. I'm more fond of College Park, too. I'll tell you that. But, uh, yeah, it's a neat little place. Got Lake Apopka, old school bass fishing. You know, mm -hmm. people used to go there 100 years ago now, 1920s and 30s, catch them big old bass. And the whole restoration project of Lake Apopka is really neat. If you ain't done that little uh, Lake Apopka restoration trail, it's pretty awesome. You start, like, kind of in the Winter Garden of Coe, and you go up, it dumps you out in, like, Zellwood. Mm -hmm. It's a one-way road. You go, like, five miles an hour. Feels like you're kind of in Disney World in your own car, and there's alligators everywhere. I'm telling you out there, guys, 
I saw so many alligators, I wasn't sure if Coach Duke had more coaches on the sideline or alligators in Lake Apopka. Because that, that, the over-under on that, I think, I think Friday night, I don't know, Coach, how many coaches you got on a Friday night? How many coaches do I have on Friday night or Monday through Thursday? Uh, let's say Friday night. <laughs> I'm not sure when I look over there sometimes. It's hard. It's just like a whole, like, there's a swarm of black shirts everywhere. Some a lot of, of supporters. <laughs> there were a lot. They, they were out there in full force. I thought I was going to cook for the whole staff, but it's so much food. I don't know if I can handle cooking for that many people. I don't know. It's a lot. But, yeah, Winter Garden's nice, but I like downtown better, too. All right. So we got a letter, Coach, this week. This is a very interesting letter, okay? <laughs> this letter comes in from uh, Mark S. And Mark S. said, what's the deal? Why do you like Matthew McConaughey so much? <laughs> I mean, he's a football guy. I read his book this summer called Green Lights. Uh, good book. Good read. Uh, Days of Confused. I mean, who doesn't like that movie? It's a classic. He's got a lot of good movies out. I didn't out. even know he was in that movie. All right, all right, all right. I, hey, <laughs> oh man, coach, that's what I'm talking about. See, no, he, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of his movies are funny. He's, uh, you know, he's a big Texas fan. That's where our running backs going. And um, you know, if this, if this is the Mark S that I'm thinking of. Um, I don't know. I would have probably said a few years ago. I would have said Mark S if it's the one I'm thinking of. But you know, he decided this Mark S uh, to to move on to bigger and better things. So now I'm more of a Matthew McConaughey fan. I understand. There's some hidden messages there. <laughs> he, he followed up with, what's your favorite romantic comedy, Coach? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a good question. What's the one that he played with Terry Bradshaw? Uh, Fool's Gold, classic, McConaughey. Okay. It's got, McConaughey, it's got McConaughey and it's got Terry Bradshaw. Great romantic comedy, Fool's Gold. All right. I don't watch too many romantic comedies. Well, you got to live a little. That, that don't make me live. <laughs> <laughs> I like I don't like crying, and I cry enough. And romantic <laughs> comedies make me cry, so I don't know. I'm gonna drink some. I'm gonna drink some toilet water. Okay, so coach, you hit me with a little uh, HBC spotlight, and this man, Coach Vandergriff, our athletic director, is so amazing. Um, I'm gonna count him actually as our Eagle family fact because that was for the adults you've done. You've done uh, Coach Hollihan, uh, aka Meyer. You've done Coach Dunstan, a.k.a. Medea. You've done uh, Coach Herm, a.k.a. Smooth T. And so now we got Coach Vandergriff. So next week we'll unveil a nickname for Coach Vandergriff. Nice. We'll have to put some, put some work into that. All right, so this one, Coach, I'm looking for a player this week. Somebody did something amazing on the field, in the classroom, in the community. Somebody that needs the light shined on them. You know, I, going back and watching the game, I thought we did some really good stuff in special teams. Um, and our kicker, senior kicker, Bailey Stokes, uh, was perfect um, on PAT. And then uh, we needed to pooch the, the ball, which is a type of kickoff uh, Friday night because our, our, when we were kicking it deep, our coverage unit wasn't quite up to par. So last week we decided to pooch it, and we pinned, she had great kicks, and we had a swarming um, kickoff unit that, that pinned them inside the 25 consistently once she started doing that. Uh, Multi-sport athlete, senior uh, kicker for us, uh, Bailey Stokes. Awesome, Bailey. Maybe you should call up LSU. I don't know. That's right. Maybe so. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, we're going to move on now to our X's and O's section. So this is where Coach breaks down something for us. So, Coach, uh, this is not something I know about. I had to do a little research and ask a few questions. And I'm going to ask you about uh, the RPO. I heard it's <clears throat> all the rage in football right now, especially high school football. So they say it's the, the run pass option. So coach is going to give us a little bit of info on the, the, the RPO. Yeah, the run pass option is a play offensively that you do where you're going to be running the football. In fact, the offensive line thinks it's a run. It's going to block the run that's called. And the running back thinks it's going to be a run where the quarterback and receivers are actually going to be reading a defender either pre-snap or post-snap. It can be de depends. Uh, depending on what that defender does, where the quarterback can then can actually throw the ball to a receiver instead of handing the ball off to the running back who thinks he's getting the ball. Sometimes you'll see it where the quarterback does it right now and he throws it to his receiver while everyone else is doing the run play. Other times you'll see the quarterback put it in uh, the mesh point with the running back and as he's reading the defender and depending on what that defender does, he could give the ball for the run play or he could pull the ball out and make the pass uh, according to the, the play that's called to a wide receiver. Um, or to a back or to a tight end. But it's a run-pass option. 
uh, where the offensive line thinks it's a run, the, the running back thinks it's a run, the quarterback's making the decision pre-snap or post-snap, depending on if we're going to run the r- called run or if the quarterback's going to pull it and actually throw to a receiver, depending on what the defense does. That's really interesting. I got a, I got a little follow-up question, Coach. Who cooks better, your mom or your wife? Ooh, my wife. Hopefully my mom's not watching this, but my wife. All right. <laughs> They're All both right. good. I eat both their food. They're both good. But, yeah. But Favorite meal wife. your wife cooks? Uh, she makes this thing called spicy beef. Okay. It's, ex- it's great. Awesome. Very neat. Okay, moving on. Coach, you own a fanny pack? I do not. You seem like a serious guy. I mean, a fanny pack is like a... <laughs> I got a waterproof one, and yeah. Friday nights I need my waterproof fanny pack. It makes me put my phone in there. Everything stays safe. I might get you a little present. I, I could use it, on, you know, if I, when I'm on the bike or if I'm on the one wheel, I could use it. Okay. Yeah. All right. He was basically saying he won't wear that fanny pack all the time. <laughs> That's what he was saying. <laughs> okay, I got you. Okay. So, Coach, we're moving on. Now, uh, 60 seconds of mentorship. That means we need our clock. Remember. We have a clock, we have a second hand, we have 60 seconds. So, uh, yeah, we got about 40 seconds till the next minute. So I'm going to give Coach a quote, and it's one of my favorite quotes. One of my friends uh, sent me this quote, and he said, Kyle, I love this quote, it makes me think of you. And he made me cry because it's, it's a pretty good quote. So I'm going to give it to Coach and see what he thinks about it. It is no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. St. Thomas of Assisi. Okay, so coach is thinking, uh, this guy was a, a saint, he was born in 1181, he died in 11 or 1226, so he was, what, 26 plus 19, he was 30, so he was 45 years old when he died, and he's one of the most famous saints ever to live. So it's no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. Five seconds, coach, tell me what you think of that quote. You know, I think your life should be lived consistently. Uh, uh, your life should be about... Um, getting somewhere to do something, hopefully you're consistent in your calling in your life day to day and, 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 and everything you do. Um, you know, when you, when you have purpose and passion, it should be lived, lived out, I believe, um, in all arenas of your life, in your family, in your career, um, in your free time, you know, your purpose and passion. You shouldn't have to go somewhere and then be on a pedestal and to, to say something. Hopefully you're just doing it consistently in your life, whatever you feel that calling is on your life or whatever you feel the purpose and passion that God has called you to, that, that it's something that you do day in and day out. You do it daily um, and consistently. I love it. I like that quote. I like Coach Duke talking about it. Um, that makes me happy just to hear what Coach has to say. So that's our 60 seconds of mentorship this week and live your life day by day and be awesome every day doing what you know is right. So last week, uh, we, we had another little technical glitch, and our camera, uh, after 30 minutes, it automatically shuts off. So we're constantly getting better, and uh, we had a bet last week, me and Coach, and that was the FSU-LSU game. FSU wins. I made Coach my jambalaya. LSU wins. I called the first play of the West Orange game, so I'm... I'm a little sad because <laughs> I really want I had a play all drawn up. It was ready to go. Didn't have any fancy RPO stuff. It was just it was just my brain being. What me. was it? Oh, coach, I gotta tell you my play. Live on the air. <laughs> you don't have to, but I, uh, I might run it still. My well it, it was the absolute opposite of option, I'll tell you that much. So just give it to our tailback? No, nah, I don't want your tailback having the ball. He gets enough. I want to see number three run. I want to see number three go. He can do I that. Want to see, I want to see number three go like this to number four, and number four ain't doing nothing. And the wide receivers are blocking, and number three just goes. Just goes. Number three goes. That's what I want. He nope, had a nope. play like that against He uh, did. Tom, I saw it. Against Don Bosco. I did. I saw that play. I liked it. So, Coach won last week. I got some games for you this week. We're going to have a little fun, Coach, okay? So, we got three games this week. We're going to up the ante. The first one is at the Bounce House over at UCF. I've never been there. You been there, Coach? I have, yep. So, it's a pretty close game against Louisville. So, it's Louisville at the University of Central Florida Golden Knights in the Bounce House. Go to you predict to win. UCF in a blowout. UCF in a blowout. So coach says UCF in a got blowout. A couple, got a couple uh, Eagles there. Awesome. I love Eagles everywhere. What is it? This that kind of like they're, they're everywhere. They really are. Okay. So next one. Uh, Kentucky at Florida in the swamp. 
Florida's coming off a big win, a lot of momentum. They have a letdown week two, Kentucky. Kentucky, Kentucky wins. Okay, next one's going to be fun. All right, we're going to do Samford at Georgia. But before Coach answers, okay, <laughs> we're going to learn a little here. We're going to play the spread. So, Coach, you estimate for me the number of coaches that you will have tonight on the sideline at an away game. At an away game? 20. 20. So I'm going to give Samford 35 points plus your 20 coaches <laughs> makes 55 points. So the spread is 55 points to Sanford, okay? Who you got, Sanford or Georgia? Sanford covers the spread. Sanford. People don't know that's where Coach Bobby Bowden played football and was a former coach right there in Birmingham. Uh, so near and dear to my heart, I got Sanford covering the spread. Sanford covers the spread. I like that one. All right, so we got three games. Coach Gates takes the, the Golden Knights of UCF over Louisville. Coach takes the Kentucky Wildcats over the Florida Gators. And Coach takes Sanford Bulldogs covering the spread, 55 points. And Georgia Bulldogs uh, winning but not covering the spread. I like it. If you're ever in Athens, Georgia, if you're there this weekend, go to the Biscuit Basket, Coach. The Biscuit Basket in Athens, Georgia, is in a gas station. People go in there and hug the ladies that cook. It's, it's where chicken biscuits come from. It's where grits come from and, and sausage and gravy. It's, it's one of my favorite places to eat in the entire world, in a gas station. The Biscuit Basket, I'm telling you. you got to let Coach Jamison, our offensive line coach, know that. Okay. He's yeah. from Georgia, too. Jo yeah, that, that Georgia area is uh, that Georgia area is pretty neat. That's where Chick-fil-A comes from, too. That's right. Yeah, near there. I, I, chicken biscuits from there are great. All right, speed option round. Here we go, Coach. Uh, we're gonna go with the theme of music. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna just rattle them off like we always do. Right. Guitar or banjo? Guitar. Trumpet or saxophone? Saxophone. Electric or acoustic? Acoustic. Guns and Roses or Def Leppard? Guns and Roses. Pour some sugar on me or Paradise City? Paradise City. Hootie and the Blowfish or Dave Matthews Band? Hootie and the Blowfish. Brett Michaels or Brian Adams? Brett Michaels. Grateful Dead or Bob Marley? Bob Marley. Country or rock? Rock. Thriller or Billy Jean? Billy Jean. Man in the Mirror or I Believe I Can Fly? Man in the Mirror. In Sync or Backstreet Boys? In Sync. Nickelback or Creed? Both are bad. Creed. Snoop Dogg or Willie Nelson? Snoop Dogg. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. Dolly Parton or Shania Twain? Dolly Parton. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Stones. Burning Man or Coachella? Burning Man. Oasis or Elton John? Oasis. Springsteen or Billy Joel? Billy Joel. Harmonica or fiddle? Fiddle. Less than Jake or Gasoline Heart? <sighs> gasoline Heart. Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera? Britney. Let It Go or Hakuna Matata? Hakuna Matata. Eagles or Warriors? <laughs> Eagles. Eagles. You heard it here first. All right, Coach, that's it. Did tonight, 7 p.m. at West Orange. Closing pride, closing thoughts, closing pride, whatever you want. Thank you for hosting this show. Uh, I guess like we could thank the water of thank Liquid you. Death. Thank you, water. Thank you. But, you know, tonight's going to be a great one. Uh, we have a lot of respect for this program we're playing. Uh, uh, their past coach, previous two years, was a former coach here, Mike Renato. He's no longer there, but he helped really build that program back up. We have our work cut out, so we need, uh, you know, we need everybody there to come and support our guys and, and, and cheer us on. We look forward to the opportunity and, and just trying to hopefully get better tonight. We, we stay away from any injuries and go have a great time and get, it, get the W tonight. So thanks for having me on again. Our pleasure, Coach. We love having you here and talking. Hit me with it. Eagle. All right.